Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Strange. My, my, my son's name was Michael Strange. Michael was a cryptologist for special ops. He was uh, part of uh, the Navy SEALs for SEAL Team 2 for a few years, and uh, last uh, almost four years he was part of SEAL Team 6. Um, Michael uh, was a brave American. He loved Philadelphia, where we're from. And uh, he fought for this country. And uh, Michael being a crypto, uh, the code for them is uh, servant silence. And uh, that silence was broken by our administration. And uh, all of a sudden there's movies, SEAL Team 6, documentaries, SEAL Team 6, SEAL Team 6, this, this, this. Where did it all start? Joe Biden in Delaware in a tuxedo with a half a load on telling everybody, it was the elite Navy SEAL team. And this is our vice president? Come on, man. You know? Um, Michael, uh, Michael knew what he was getting into. Michael knew what he was fighting for. Michael knew that someday he might have to give the ultimate sacrifice. And, uh, but not like this. To put my son and the most elite SEAL team in the world in a Chinook helicopter over an active battle that's going on for three and a half hours? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Somebody has to answer for this. You know? A Chinook from 1985? You know? Look outside the picture. You know? Who's getting paid to keep rebuilding these Chinooks? Who's making the money? Right? 93 days after killing bin Laden, all of a sudden you're going to put 22 of the most elite in SEAL Team 6 in the world and eight other great Americans into a Chinook over the battle. Um, August 6th, I got the call about my son's death. It's like a knife in my heart that turns every day. I cry every day. I get sad every day. My other children, you know. Michael's 25 years old. And uh, we go to Dover to see the bodies. And uh, we're all in the hangar down there. And uh, President Obama comes up to me and he says, Mr. Strange, he grabs me by the shoulders. Michael changed the way America lives. I grabbed Mr. President by the shoulders and I said, I don't need to know about my son. I need to know what happened, Mr. President. And the Secret Service guys grabbed me. And I'm crying. And he went to give me a hug and I whispered in his ear. I said, Mr. President, is there going to be a congressional inquiry? And Mr. President whispered in my ear, and I could feel his lips touching. He said, Mr. Strange, we're going to look into this very, very, very deep. Well, I haven't heard nothing. October, we went down for General Colt's assessment of the investigation. We get there. They have a projector screen. The families are there. He's going over. What happened? He said it went through a chain of command for this landing site. I raised my hand. I said, sir, could I have the names of that chain of command? His neck snaps. He said, it's in the book, sir. I said, how about the black box? Black box got blown away by the flood in Afghanistan. Come on. Can't find the black box, which is really orange. I looked it up in the Google. <laughs> Them black boxes don't go away. They lose black boxes in the swamps in Florida, and they find them. You're going to tell me you can't find the black box? Not acceptable. I tell my boss stuff like that, I get fired. Right? My son's 25-year-old son got set up and killed. So this goes on about it's in the book. It's in the book. I have the book right here. They didn't put no ink in it. How can you give me a book with no ink in it? I call up the command. They said, we got a lot of complaints about that. I said, well, send me another one. We burned it. You burned it? 
But he gave us a disk. Put the disk in the computer. It's whited out. See two sentences. It's whited out. My beautiful wife, I was looking at it. I said, we have to do something with this disk. My wife, the genius, it's not me. Michael's stepmother, my heart and soul. We print it out. We print the disk out. It tells you everything. It was a setup. The Taliban sitting there with machine guns, motorcycles, phones. Who called them to tell them? Right? In the paperwork. Karen mentioned it. Billy mentioned it. General Colt's asking questions. What happened to the, to the air controller? Was there, did you check the area out? They were going into the Tangine Valley. Tangine Valley, it says in here, it's the stronghold for the Taliban. You're going to put them in a over the stronghold of the Taliban? Did anybody check the area out? Here it is, right here. Everybody can get a copy. It says, it's very brief again. It's out of the task force, blank. And it says something to the effect that over 100 Taliban plan to travel from Providence through the Tangine Valley to sh possibly shoot down the coalition force. May 11th, 10 days after they killed bin Laden, the Taliban know who's coming in a Chinook helicopter? Rules of engagement? It says in here, the Rangers are fighting the Taliban, right? They're chasing Quat's hair, eight of them. They kill six, two get away. Quat's hair and his buddy run into 18 to 20. It's in the paperwork. They run into 18 to 20 of them. I said, why didn't they take it out with a drone? The wind's the heart. What's his name? Admiral, oh, he's lucky he ain't here. Admiral Horowitz turns around and says, to win the hearts and minds. How about my heart? How about my mind? I cry every day. My kids cry. The win the hearts and minds of them people, they hate us. They hate, my son told me they hate us. They know the rules of engagement. After the crash site, the Taliban walked up with kids in front of them to see if they could skin our kids alive. It's in the paperwork. I ain't making this up. I'm no military. It's in black and white. Pages. You know? So this mission goes on. He asks, uh, how about the air planners? Did they, were there planners in there? No, we didn't see them. Who gave the okay? Who is going to be held responsible? Someone has to be held responsible. And it says in our paperwork, it goes all the way up to the top. It mentions Petraeus. It mentions Leon Panetta. All the way to the top. So General Colt's giving us this briefing, and he's telling us the helicopter's coming in. They're walking going to a, a, it's a pitch black. It's pitch black. But they see a couple guys on top of a building. They call up the Afghan administration to find out at 2 o'clock in the morning what these guys are doing on the building. You know what they told them? They're hanging crops. Now, I'm from Philadelphia, and we don't have many crops there. But I don't know people that hang crops up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And this is supposedly where the shot came from. General Colt says... They shot an RPG 150 to 200 yards in the pitch dark. With, they, they have night vision goggles, the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda. They got AK-47s. They got RPGs. They got man pads. When we're changing the rules of engagement here to benefit them, we lost almost 7,000. Our guys coming home, does anybody know the suicide rate for these poor men coming home? It's one a day they're killing themselves. One a day these men are coming home, killing themselves. I met men that were over there. Poor kid, you can't pop popcorn around them. We're changing the rules. So he says it's an RPG, a lucky shot. Are we playing basketball, hockey? Is he out of his mind? 
There's nothing lucky here. All our sons are dead. You know? I raised my hand. I said, General Cole, could it have been a missile? Heat seeking missile, right? And there's no coincidence that the Doherty and Woods might have found some heat seeking missiles, right? Man pots, thousands of them, and all of a sudden you see what happened to them. All of a sudden, all these SEAL Team 6 guys are disappearing. Something is wrong. We need a congressional inquiry. Somebody has to be accountable for the biggest loss in this war. Here's no eye in the sky. The eye went off. When the helicopter got shot down, it's in the paperwork. We didn't know what helicopter got shot. It took us 10 minutes. My son, right? My son, Michael, was fighting for his life. Nobody came and helped. They didn't have the pathfinders there to check the area. Nobody no, checked the light. Nobody counted. Well, who's calling the shots here? This is bullshit. They told me my son had to be cremated. Everybody has to be cremated. My son didn't need to be cremated. I got pictures of my son. He was fighting. He had a gun in his hand. Come on. Fighting for this country, for us. And you're going to lie to me and slap me in the face? I called the command. I said, why'd you cremate my son? My son didn't want to be cremated. He's like, what do you mean? I got pictures of him. When I asked for the autopsy report from Dover, they sent me a disc with pictures. He's sitting there fighting. Everybody was burned beyond record. No, everybody wasn't burned yet beyond record. Another lie. Somebody has to be held accountable. No pathfinders. All of a sudden, the eye in the sky don't work. This is all facts. This is from the people that were there. General Colt's statement in here when he's questioning these guys. Exact words. Did a red flag go up? When you put everybody in the same helicopter, no one knows the names of the Afghans that got on. They're not on the manifest. Something's wrong here. I'm asking for the American people to help us for a change. Something has to be done. How did you assess the crash? We had 30 plans to assess the crash. We had Black Hawks, we had Pathfinders, we had 140 men go in. You knew it was going to crash? You knew, they knew. Just like the Taliban knew they were coming with 100 guys. They knew May 10th, it's documented, that SEAL Team 6 was coming. Who's the leak? Somebody has to be held accountable for it. And it's all in black. It's fact. And who's profiting from this? Besides the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda. Huh? Follow the money. And is that what happened in Benghazi? Somebody's leading something out all of a sudden? Something has to be done. And I'm asking everybody to stand up and please help us. And I'd like to thank my friend here, Larry, for standing up and, and, and leading us too with Billy and Karen. That's all I got.